Hello, we are here to look at the newly released level five fifth grade of math with confidence. This program is developed and written by Kate Snow, who has been around in the homeschool world with math and math education for quite a while. And she has been releasing one new level a year of this program. So let's take a look. Hey, for those of you who are new here, I am Sarah from Homespun Childhood. I'm a former teacher turned homeschool mom of three and literacy specialist here at Homespun Childhood. I share all things homeschool, curriculum, literacy, and more. And today we're looking at Math with Confidence, grade five. Now this program has one more level until the program is complete. Uh, level six, grade six will come out next year. So this has been a slow release. Each year a new level has been published. If you are interested in looking at the previous levels, I will link all of those reviews below. I have reviews um, and flip throughs for all of those. So let's dive in. So this program is a evidence-based, systematic and explicit math instruction program. If we look at the fifth grade standards, Okay, so for those of you who are kind of new to the homeschool world, standards are a way of looking at what typical students in a typical grade level are learning. Obviously with homeschool, there's a lot of variation with where children are in terms of their skills. Um, grade levels aren't necessarily something that all homeschool families use. So, you know, keep that in mind. However, if you're wondering, well, what are the schools doing in fifth grade for any of the subjects? Or, you know, what is fifth grade appropriate? Kind of where, where do my skills line up? You can look up the standards for your state for all the different grade levels and for all the different content areas. So for math, I have grade math here. These are the Common Core state standards. We're not gonna dive into Common Core or whatever, but that's where we are with math standards. So the way we read these is they have a mathematics grade five overview and it's kind of looking at the three critical areas. Uh, developing fluency with addition, subtraction of fractions and developing understanding of the multiplication of fractions and division of fractions in limited cases. Extending division to two digit divisors, integrating decimal fractions Actions into the place value system and developing understanding of operations with decimals two hundredths, developing fluency with whole number and decimal operations and developing understanding of volume. So what does that all mean? Fifth grade math is a lot of fractions. Okay. We are looking at multiplying, adding, dividing fractions, comparing fractions, using decimals and fractions. And then we're also continuing geometry with exploring volume. So then they have an overview here of the different domains of math. We have operations and algebraic thinking. We we have numbers and operations in base 10, number operations fraction, measurement and data, and geometry. And then they break those down even farther. What does that actually look like? Okay, so the reason I'm showing you these is because this program is aligned with fifth grade standards. There is a lot of talk in the math world about, oh, some programs are more rigorous than others. I don't really want to have a whole conversation about math and rigor. I have my own opinions on that. However, it's important to keep in mind that when we're looking at curricula, looking at what kind of grade level it is representing is important. So for example, programs like Singapore Dimensions Math tend to run half a year to a full year above grade level standards. So just keep in mind that depending on the program you're looking at, it might not align with the standards. Now, I have looked through this program and I've looked through the standards and the only thing that I can really see standing out as a difference between the two is that there is a mention of using exponents, beginning to understand exponents in these standards. We don't introduce exponents in Math with Confidence grade five that I could see. I might be wrong. So let's dive in. What does this program include? You get your giant beast of a teacher guide and then you have two volumes for your student workbook. This is the same as for third grade and fourth grade where you had volume A and volume B, just to break up the workbook so the students don't have this like super giant workbook, okay? So let's put that aside for a minute and we'll look at the teacher guide. Okay, so we start with our table of contents. The different units are in here. We have 16 units, just like in the previous grade. Our units are not divided by week. They are just divided by how many lessons, you know, it takes to cover that unit material. So each unit has kind of a different number of lessons. So we're moving through order of operations, place value with decimals, whole number, multiplication, volume, fraction work, more division work, geometry, more fraction and division work, data, the welcome to math with confidence note, and then we have our introduction. So the goals of fifth grade math with confidence, what's new in fifth grade math, 
you'll find a few changes in fifth grade math with confidence to reflect your child's growing maturity. The lesson activity pages have more examples and text to read together so that your child develops the ability to read and study math more independently. So we're moving towards more of a textbook kind of approach with math where there's the learning for the child to read, some examples, and then they do the material. Now that said, this is not set up that way. It's just starting to scaffold that and build towards it. Each unit now includes a unit reference page that summarizes the core skills your child will learn. This is great. I really like this unit reference page and I'll show you what those look like in a minute. And then there's no longer a different picture book listed at the end of each unit. Lessons recommend buying one longer book and reading a few pages from the book until the end of the unit. I don't have that book on me yet. I do have it on hold from the library and I will flip through that um, over on Instagram when I get it. So we have our two books and then we have our breakdown. The setup for this program is the same as previous Math with Confidence levels. This is walking through how to read the program, how to use the program. If you are new to Math with Confidence, I do recommend reading through all of this so that you understand how the program is developed. They also talk about how to adjust the lessons to fit your child and their schedule, developing independence in math, and then the materials for your material kit. Just a quick look over here. If you already did Math with Confidence 4, I don't think you're going to need any new materials for this. You will need fraction manipulatives to complete and work with the fraction units. And if you don't have access to that, they do have Blackline Masters that you can just print on cardstock or something and use that way. There's also still memory work and whatnot. Okay, so then we jump into unit one. All of the Math with Confidence programs start with a little bit of review and then start adding on work after that. So all of the units are also developed the same way. We have this overview of what this unit's going to be, what your child is going to learn, the different lessons. So this unit has 11 lessons when you include the enrichment lesson and then extra materials that you will need for the enrichment lessons. Then we have the page that is the teaching with math with confidence, kind of how do you do this page, how to teach your child to read math text and learn from printed examples. Again, I really like that this program includes this kind of breakdown. It is written towards you as a homeschool parent. And then we have our lessons. I'm not going to do a flip through of these beginning lessons because they are review lessons. Uh, we're reviewing mental division, reviewing long division. There are games embedded with most of these lessons like in previous levels, reviewing line plots and averages, reviewing measurement conversions, finding the missing number and equations, okay? And then we get to kind of this new learning part. So lesson 1.9 is order of operations, part one. And so all these lessons are divided up the same way. We have our call out box here with our purpose, our materials and our memory work. Then you have a little gray box about kind of what this lesson is about for you. And then we move into the different sections of the lesson. So we have warm up A, why do we need rules for the orders of operations? If we come over to the textbook for the student lesson, okay, we have A and that correlates with warm up A here. And then you have B and that goes with B here. And so again, these lessons, the pages, you're kind of doing this lesson activity page with your child. So there's three pages for each lesson. So you're doing this page with your child following the guide then your child has a practice page that they should be working on independently. And then there's a review page. This is your spiral review pulling in from previous learning. The way our family does math with confidence, because I have several children, is I do the math lesson with my daughter, who's going to be in third grade math this year, first. And then I assign her her practice page. And then I do the math lesson with my son while my daughter is doing her practice page. And then he does his practice page while I start math with my youngest who is continuing with kindergarten math with confidence. The review page I assign as part of morning work. So he will have already done, let's say it's Monday, he does lesson 1.9. Tuesday morning as part of morning work, he does a review page for 1.9. Okay, so keeping in mind, you don't have to do all of that in one big chunk. Let's look through the rest of kind of this unit one here. So we have the activities like we were talking about and we move into order of operations, part two. There is a game here, order of operations, war. And then it has an introduction to the reference pages. Show your child the unit one reference pages. These pages summarize what you learned in unit one. You will review what you learned in unit one throughout the rest of the year. If you ever get stuck on a skill you learned, look back at these reference pages. And then they have your enrichment option and your unit wrap up. Okay, so if we look back over here, 
The way that these workbooks are organized, they are actually color coordinated on the top by unit. So unit one is this dark red here. And when it switches to orange, that's unit two. Well, they're pretty similar, but they are different, slightly different. Here is our unit wrap up. The unit wrap up is like an assessment for the unit you just did. So we have two pages for the wrap up. And then those reference sheets they were telling you about are at the end of the book. I plan on taking these out and binding them and having just a little math reference um, spiral bound thing that my child can look through. So here is what the unit one reference page looks like. It's kind of just like your little text about all the different things that they were reviewing and learning. If they forget the steps of long division, for example, how to do averages, multiply or divide to convert measurements, the order of operations is down here. So these are like their little handy reference pages or cheat sheets. They do have all the sample pages and answers at the end of the unit here. And then your what to expect at the end of unit one, is my child ready to move on? What to do if they need more practice? Okay, and then it moves on to unit two. We're gonna skip ahead to unit five, which is add and subtract fractions with mixed numbers and different denominations. So again, we have our breakdown of what this unit is going to include, teaching with math with confidence, learning to organize written work in math, which is a great thing to include here. And then we're reviewing our fractions with a game and our activity pages, reviewing mixed numbers, more games, reviewing equivalent fractions, more games, okay, using common denominators to compare fractions, using common denominators to add fractions. So one of the things I really like about Math with Confidence is that it is really giving you an absolutely solid base in the foundations of mathematics. There are other programs out there. I see people sharing, they're like, wow, this program covers so much material. Your child is gonna learn so much in math. Is the learning actually sticking? Is it a solid foundation to move ahead on or was it a mile wide and an inch deep? Keeping that in mind. So if we look over here, we're now in the yellow section for the unit on fractions. And again, we have the same kind of general setup here where we have three pages per lesson, including that review page. And then we move to our reference sheet that's also yellow coordinated. That mustard color, there we go. Unit five, references on fractions, mixed numbers, equivalent fractions, using common denominators to compare fractions, how to find the common denominators. Okay. We're gonna look at one more unit here, a quick look through of unit 12 on geometry. So in this unit, you're going to be working with angles we're gonna review different angles. We're going to draw angles and solve angle puzzles. Reviewing acute right and obtuse triangles. Finding the missing angle in triangles. Equilateral isosceles and scalene triangles. Lots of triangle work. Categorizing angles by their sides. Reviewing quadrilaterals. And your enrichment lesson with tessellations. So we come over here, now that we're in workbook B. And unit 12, okay? If we look to the end here, the reference pages for those units are in the back of part B. So the reference pages are divided between the two books. At the end of our teacher guide here. You have the memory work is all listed out for you. So older memory work and then new memory work by unit. This is also embedded within the lessons, but it is here separate if you wanted that to be separate. Maybe you were doing that as part of a morning basket or something. Then we have our scope and sequence. So what is the unit? What are the objectives? Your materials list and other supplies your guide to the Blackline Masters, you are able to download all of these and print them off. You have your reference Blackline Masters, your memory work, your charts. I will probably print these off and bind these with those reference pages that were um, perforated in the back of the book. 
multiplication assessment, multiplication game war, and then if you don't have access to um, fraction bars, you could print this off, you know, on cardstock, etc. Okay, so that is a quick look inside the new Math with Confidence level five. If you have questions about Math with Confidence, if you want to see how we're using Math with Confidence, head on over to my Instagram account, homespun.childhood, and I have a math highlight there. You can drop questions below. Um, I also have blog posts on all the different levels. And yeah, so if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and definitely subscribe for future videos. Bye, y'all.